One of the great motifs of Scripture is worship is warfare. Worship is warfare. When Abraham went into the land of promise, he built altars everywhere he went, worshiping the Lord and claiming the land by faith. Centuries later, the people marched around Jericho, shouting and blowing trumpets until the walls fell down. Even the promises of the tabernacle and temple were that as Israel worshiped their king, he would fight for them. He would drive away their enemies. And while the nation often forgot God and turned to idols, whenever a king repented and turned back to the Lord, God would deliver them from their enemies. In the book of Revelation, John sees a vision of worship happening in heaven and judgments are being poured out on the nations of men. The elders fall down before the Lord, the angels are blowing their trumpets, and the congregation of innumerable saints is shouting praises before the lamb who was slain. And as they do this, cups of judgment are being poured out on the earth. But do not think that we cannot join that worship until we die. No. Hebrews 12 says that we have already joined that heavenly worship service. When the minister says at the beginning of the service, as I just did a minute ago, lift up your hearts, and you respond, we lift them up to the Lord, we are saying that we are ascending into the presence of the Lord by faith and by the working of his spirit. We are joining that heavenly worship service. And that means that we believe that what we do here in prayer and song and word and sacrament is part of what John saw. It's part of the great war against sin, death, the devil, and all darkness. Therefore, the exhortation this morning is to sing like you are in the heavenly choirs, because you are. Sing loud, sing exuberantly, belt it out. Is there injustice in our land? Are there people plotting against God's righteous ones? Then sing out. And related to that, one of our practices here is to say a hearty amen at the end of our hymns and prayers. Amen doesn't mean now we're done. Amen is a holy oath that means we believe with all our heart and soul what we have just said and sung, and we are asking God to make it completely so. We're saying, do it, Lord. Do it in our lives and do it in the world. So don't mumble your oath. Let it thunder like we are the army of worshiping saints because we are. And just so we can practice one time, all God's people said,